I recently, uh, and recently is a month and a half ago, watched one of your videos, and it was about a mystery that I had heard of before, but mm. the time I'd heard of it before was probably from like one of those like Fox specials where yeah. they leave it up in the air. Was it aliens or the <laughs> devil? <laughs> it's one of the two. <laughs> it's definitely one of them. Yeah. But it was, um, and, and I think it might be one that I have mocked on here before because of uh, one of the, the 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 facts in the case. So so this is you'll you'll know right away. I'm, I know the pieces. This is the one where that lady survivalist led her group of student survivalists and. Um, only one ended up surviving their uh, their retreat, um, and that person that was a young lady, and she reported um, the rest of the group like falling ill, going into seizures, clawing at their skin, their faces and stuff, and dying subsequently. And um, and and she couldn't understand or make what was happening, and so she just yeah. fled. And uh, like two or three more days later, they they found her, but then they didn't go back for the bodies for like a couple of weeks or something mm -hmm. like that. And by then. The evidence was so so, and and no one's ever really figured out. But it's, I, I could, could you help me out with like what Absolutely. actually? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, the Kamar Duban Pass. Um, that's the region where it happened. It happened in uh, I think it was the eighties, if I remember correctly, eighties, nineties, um, on the border of Russia and Kazakhstan in a region known as like the Kamar Duban Mountain region. Um, I gave most of the details in the video, but the short run through is that this lady uh, was known for taking these groups of hikers on these like week long hiking trips up into the mountains around Kazakhstan, which are pretty considerable mountains. Uh, you've mm -hmm. got to be like a decent survivalist to begin with to get up there. Uh, and this specific group that she went with was a group of her students, so to speak, who she'd been doing it with for a couple of years. So they were like very experienced. And this pass that they were going on wasn't particularly hard by any means it was comparatively easy mm -hmm. uh they had taken all the food that they needed uh for the amount of time given they there was other groups who were hiking the mountain at the same time that they had planned to have rally points where they would meet up and then continue uh and then one day i believe it was about five days into the trip <clears throat> the other group she was supposed to meet with did not see her at one of these rally points uh or her group and they uh, it had rained the day before mm -hmm. so yes yeah there's a good idea for what the region's like um it had rained the day before, so they just figured, oh, well, they probably just got slowed down because of the rain, mm -hmm. and um, like we'll see them whenever we get there. But sure enough, they get to the bottom of the mountain, and that group isn't there. Uh, so eventually, they launch an investigation. People start looking, and then about three days later, one of the students who was in that group shows up at a local city, uh, and she goes to the police and tells them the whole story. The exact details of what she said isn't known. Uh, and then two weeks after that, and that's like one of the real suspicious details of the case. They didn't launch an investigation for two weeks. Weather was pretty clear at the time. Two weeks later, they go look for them up on top of the mountain. And then there is video footage of the entire uh, search for them and their eventual finding of the body. And then I believe it was six people. She, the survivor made seven. Six people all within a couple hundred feet of each other are just lying dead in a clearing on top of the mountain. Um, they're like a couple of them are lying next to each other. One of them's like more true towards the woods as if they're running away Two more together at the front of the woods. And it starts to paint a really weird picture. Uh, the initial idea at the time mm -hmm. was that the survivor had murdered the others because logically, if, you know, six people die, only one comes back. That would mm -hmm. be the solution. However, there was mm -hmm. no evidence on the bodies that there was, um, any kind of fight or any kind of strangulation marks or whatever. But then even more suspiciously, after doing a full autopsy, there was no evidence of anything that happened to these bodies. They just kind of dropped over. There wasn't signs that you would see in um, uh, hypothermia, like uh, late stage, like, uh, like uh, what what is it? Like the lung or the lung fluid starts to contract or recede or whatever. <laughs> and the that. skin of... Yeah, the skin of the bodies were too decomposed at this point to see if they were like, you know, frozen up or anything. Um, so it remained a total mystery of what had happened for about 20 years. Uh, eventually, a reporter actually is like more like 30 years is like 28. A reporter eventually tracked down the one survivor and asked for a testimony because what had happened is she gave the police a testimony and then never mentioned it to anyone else. So she finally sat down with the reporter after 30 years and gave her side of the story and said that what had happened is they were just walking down the mountain. 
everything was normal. It had rained the day before, uh, although they were okay. They had ate breakfast. And then one of them starts screaming and coughing up blood. And then one, uh, it was the teacher runs over to help him out. She kneels down next to him and immediately starts coughing up blood too. She looks up at the group and blood is running out of her eyes and she's telling them to get away. So, of course, the five remaining begin to freak out and run. And as they're running, one of the guys drop. Exact same thing happens to him. Uh, one of the girls, I think it was maybe uh, his girlfriend or something, comes this back to help. Same thing happens later. to her. Carry on. Yeah, it, it's like it's like <laughs> such a weird, bizarre story. Yeah. Um, eventually, the rest of them run, and the only one who keeps running and does not succumb to whatever's happening is the one girl who ended up being a survivor. Uh, she had enough temporary... Um, uh, shelter on her back she was able to set up camp for the night although all of the food was with the people who had died so the next day she did the math and was like i can't walk for four days without food or water i'm going to have to go back to the body so uh, the next morning she gets up she goes back to the bodies and they're all still laying there that's they're in the exact same position that they had dropped down at so she took her food and managed to make the hike. The four days went to the police station. And the reason she said that she had never told that story is because she assumed no one would believe her and would think that she's covering up for some reason. Because, you know, if one girl survives a hiking trip and then it's like, she's oh, right. no, they all started bleeding from the face. That's going to cause yeah. some suspicion, which is right. the reason she told when them. they found the bodies. And you were saying they like they didn't see anything about them like having you know, died in a curious condition. Mm -hmm. What about all the vomiting and the blood and the. So the, it, it had been two weeks uh, outside. So like the top layer of skin was just like darkened, sunken in across the face. Um, all the blood at that point had either whenever someone dies outside in the woods, there's a lot of bloating and like pustules and other gross stuff. Not to mention the crows had picked these people's eyeballs out yeah. and like the foxes ate their lips off. Like they're, they, God knows what was left of them. Yeah, yeah it looks pretty bad. There, yeah. uh, you can't see like the full body on the video, but he comes up to someone who's laying face down, and you can see his hands, and they're just like black and emaciated. So th oh. they're in a pretty rough condition. They weren't able to tell anything. Like if they're like one of those body. Everest bodies you see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where it's like, like they look that, like a right. really, like really old piece of dog shit. So, so before, <laughs> so before, so I think you've one of your explanations, um, and probably the one that you think is the best, is what I agree with, and it makes a lot of sense to me. But before we like, I feel like it's almost a spoiler. Let's, <laughs> let's see what the Woody and Taylor. Do you guys have yeah, any this like, is theories good, about like what could have gone wrong here? <clears throat> so she you didn't know, murder them. You you know where this happened, the time that was of one year, of the theories. um, and, and and you know the rough, roughly uh, the. I the like event. this, Kyle. This is good. This is the good. murder <laughs> thing. The murder thing doesn't make sense because you said it was a woman who survived, and mm -hmm. it was a group of people who would have like fought back if someone was just like sort of willy nilly murdering. Yeah, the survivor was what, like. What a about what about poison? Girl. Like, could you poison? Are there any berries that cause symptoms? What they experienced or any food like that in the region? So, there, Go, go ahead. Well, they're all survivalists, right? Like, like they know the poison. They could be bad from, ones. From the good I painted ones. something today. But, it's terrible. But these are. <laughs> Taylor, I don't like what you're doing. You need so, to lay so, out your. Let me theory, lay this out. So, Wendigoon, Wendigoon gave, gave you like the fast forward version, but mm. these are the best. This lady, like, mm. like, I think I've made fun of her before in the past. Like, some lady led a bunch of kids up into the wilderness, <laughs> and then they all ran out of their tents naked at night and froze to death. Like, I think that was that's what I had heard. But no, like like she was a legit like fucking Sarah Connor style uh, survivalist lady who knew her shit and knew how many calories each person would need to be eating each day down to 100 calories. And like she was an expert. Okay. Here's my theory. Okay. They were looking. She looked at her food supplies, determined that there wasn't enough for everyone to live. Found some way to kill her, the people around her so that she could and made it out. Okay. So and murder I, is, is is murder is the way I'm going on. This. Okay. All right. Did did she report that they were like short on food during their expedition? I so guess if you murdered someone for food, you wouldn't. They could have made it out. out they could have made it out without food as long as they had water, right? Because like they're survivalists. Four they days. Eaten. Yeah, yeah. They could, to continue to continue giving the facts, whenever they found the bodies, uh, most of them had their food supplies still on them that hadn't been ate through. Okay. Uh, indicating uh -huh. that they didn't starve. So. Oh, I'm gonna I mean, I'm gonna change my answer. There was a romance thing. There was a romance thing. She didn't like. There was some Ooh. sort of interpersonal oh, thing. The going seven on. way 
and she, and she wanted to be a and she she wanted a good old fashioned traditional four way. <laughs> we got into uh, like this guy, four like men, that just guy, being this guy like a girl, but he wanted to be like she wanted to be liked instead. So she murdered like three or four of them, so they wouldn't know she was targeting that girl in particular. Or maybe but it all happened like, so like, quickly, apparently, because like, they're like all I, in that little area. Well, if it, if I thought it was that, I would probably imagine a scenario where she killed one girl but then she got caught and like maybe they were maybe they were like you killed amber we're telling on you when we get back and then she poisons everybody that night like just you could became see- a brawl oh yeah. oh you're saying she killed them after one murder i see what yeah yeah because what are they gonna do arrest her they're four days out they're they're like i can't believe what that's what would happen they'd be like i can't believe you killed amber and you know maybe they got into a fight you, you, you don't know, tie or... him up or something if if someone murders someone on a camping trip you don't go hey strike one buster <laughs> you, 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 that, that's fucking absurd no you would tie them up and leave them if anything like um if it was a cute girl and there were there were other girls there to be like mark you're not gonna tie up becky are you her hands are turning blue she said she can't breathe <laughs> What do you mean she can't breathe? Her hands are tight. She can't breathe. <laughs> I don't. I don't imagine. You that. cut yeah. those ropes just to avoid the screaming. Just, uh, <laughs> this is funny because no, Donald that's how it happened. And then one what? guy got so tired of it, he tied them all up. <laughs> he just left them. Just, <laughs> just, just a random it's woodsman was like, all six of them were tied up in one circle. <laughs> Crazy how bears do that randomly. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's interesting. I'm I'm trying it. There must be an answer to this that you guys know. I don't want you. I keep going back to poison. I don't understand okay what can make wrong, everyone Taylor. do the Just same the thing. Along. Yeah, according to my <laughs> theory, the one that like I subscribe to, you're not far off with the poison. Mm-hmm. Right. I was about to say that. Yeah. What do right. they suspect? Spill uh, the beans, yeah. Wendigo. Yes, tell I'll spill the beans. All right. So this is kind of like a bit of a cheat because you didn't know this information going in. Um, however, this region of the uh, the Kamar Daban region, which is again on the border, it's of full of ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very haunted, <laughs> notoriously full, full of ghosts. ghosts. The ghost. It's the home of the Ghoul the- King. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a bad area where we got bad with ghosts. <laughs> yeah. Lousy yeah. with ghosts. Yeah, right, <laughs> right with ghosts. Right with ghosts. <laughs> right, i'm sorry yeah it's ghost yeah, season up there you jest but this is how most of the theories i read about this is where they come from uh, fun. i like it. it they are anyway so that region uh that's on the russian border was used uh during the cold war as a weapons testing facility uh that is an openly documented fact that they would use the mountains mm. to test uh mortar fire or artillery barrages and most importantly for this story gas attacks uh there are specific strains of nerve gas that were tested in the region at that time that uh can last in the air for i think some of them are up to like a year and a half like once they're detonated they just have to disperse and then hopefully no one breathes it in uh and a lot of them were detonated like in these completely obscure like canyons and mountains for that reason most importantly to this story most of them are pliable to water So if you were to physically flush a region or wash it, it would cause the gas to not be destroyed, but to move somewhere else. So the theory that uh, a lot of people subscribe to and the one that makes the most sense to me is that they're hiking down the mountainside um, and then it had rained the day before, which again matters for this story. So it rains and this rain causes a washout of a mountain, a canyon, a valley or something and causes the gas to move along the mountainside. This group of hikers are then walking. And it's also important for this story. This was like in the final years of the Cold War, whenever stuff like nerve gas was being developed a lot. So it Mm -hmm. makes sense that if they did test it, it would still exist around there. Um, So they're walking down the mountainside. And then all it takes, uh, I forget what the name of the one I showed in the video was that was tested in that region. But it is so effective that like half of one of Kyle's vape pits would kill you instantly. Uh, it just takes a very minute amount. So as it's flooding through the region, one of them just breathes in a little bit, and that would immediately cause the lining of their lungs to begin to fall apart. It would cause the bleeding of the eyes and other soft tissues. Uh, oh, another detail I did admit, mention, according to the survive. <laughs> Kyle's died. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, like that, the nerve gas, there it goes. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I saw that scratching your eyes. What, what I didn't mention is um, one of the girls who was affected, according to the survivor, uh, she started bashing her head onto a rock and like scratching at her throat indicating that it was painful or she could feel something in there so that would explain what <laughs> Kyle's about what about the what about the rock what, because what of the mean? pain oh well she she would have been feeling like the inside of her eyes and like nasal cavity bleeding and flaring out and according to this girl she just started hitting her head against a rock as she was dying that is so uh, fucked up yeah it's, it's pretty brutal um that would also explain why one of them got affected, and then the person who came to stand in the same spot they were also got infected. There's oh, also the very important mention from the survivor that it was foggy on the mountain that day, which oh. could have not entirely been fog. So yeah, oh. the, the theory that a lot of people go with, and I, I'm not the only harebrained one. This is kind of like the consensus online, so to speak. No, I'm in, is man. That they, is that mm. they were victims of old Soviet weapon testing. So. Yeah, that makes uh, – <clears throat> when you said that in your video, I was like, yes. That checks too many boxes with the – it's in the right region, the right time frame, and the right effects. And and, and mm -hmm. I, I don't know anything. I'm sure there's some poisons that would cause that, but none that should be there other than the ones that were being tested there in yeah. the region. Now, yeah. whether it was a cloud of it that, like, moved in a special, unique way, that – I'm not so sure. I could easily see one of them found the shell and had it in his, had it in his bag. <clears throat> and then maybe yep. the cops found it and were like, oh, call the military. And the military was like, you never saw this. Like something like that could have happened. But that's cause, also cause the cloud seems like funky to me. That's also part of the reason. So her original police statement was never published. Uh, she said later that's the story she told the police and they kept it confidential for some reason. Mm -hmm. And that's also why people think the police didn't investigate for two weeks. Uh, because the police are like, oh, well, that's the old weapons testing. We want to make sure that stuff clears out of the area before we go up there and yeah. go looking. Because the military is like, hey, police, give us two weeks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, then you, and, then, and then trust me, you can walk on as much grass and turn over as many leaves as you like. <laughs> During the yeah, Cold War, anything like that would have been suppressed. Like, like, like yeah, yeah. Um, the, the United States was suppressing sure. tons of stuff and the Soviets were even worse. Like, like, like yeah. you know, you needed to hide every failure because it, it made you, you know, it was life or death. If it, if it looked like they might win that that launch sequence battle, then they might actually do it. That's why you had to stay a step of, ahead. I've been well, trying to find, like, I've been reading a bunch of horror anthology books and shit recently. I, I bought the the Necronomicon, the mm, compilation of all of uh, H.P. Lovecraft's, his short stories. Like any anthology book, a lot of hits, a lot of misses. What's what's a purportedly true story, Wendigoon, that you would you would point me to that has a shit ton of lore around it that might actually scare me. It doesn't even have to be, it doesn't have to be demonic. It could be anything in your, like the spooky realm you inhabit. A true story though, right? Yeah. Something that like I could look to it and it could even be like, we don't, we don't even know why this happened, but it did. Mm. The ones that always freaked me out are disappearance cases. Like, you know, got into thin air type things. Mm -hmm. Um, I recently did one about the Yuba County Five. That case freaks me out a lot, but I think I have a decent explanation for it. It's not a fun answer, but it's like a, a, something that doesn't involve supernatural, right? Is that like a murderer case? A murder uh, case? Maybe. It's five yeah. guys went up into the mountains um, under very weird circumstances. They were never supposed to go up there. It's a long story. Um, but four of them, their bodies end up being found. One disappeared. A lot of beliefs are that the one who disappeared was the guy who murdered. I made a video about it recently. I don't think that's what happened. Instead, I think that he was forced off the mountain. I think the boys were chased by someone up there, um, which isn't a fun answer. That's, that doesn't make you yeah. feel better, but it's, it's not explicitly supernatural. Like a lot of uh, explanations around those stories tend to be. Some of the ones that I would say are more creepy in their unexplained nature are the case of Dennis Martin. Um, I made a video about that, uh, and my conclusion at the end was like, oh, who knows? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know, but it's scary, isn't it, guys? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, uh, anyway, that's weird. See y'all next week, yeah. Um, uh, the case of Dennis Martin's up there. The case, uh, oh, what was that boy? Hold on, hold on. Let me let me type this in real quick. You're good. Uh, boy. Dennis Martin. Such an blah, innocent blah, blah. name. Yeah, he was six, I think. He was five or six. Oh. Uh, Garrett Bardsley. 
that's the other one I was thinking of. This this was a Boy Scout. He was out on a fishing trip with his father. Uh, and it, I can get into the details of these if you want. But if you just want the names, Garrett Bardsley, uh, Dennis Martin. And then there's one more. Um, carried, let me. I can put in like the highlights of the case and typically it will pull up. Uh, Jared Atadero. Spanish show Jared J J A R Y D and then Adadero A T A D E R O. Um, those are ones that it, it's kind of like, yeah, Taylor, go read that and tell me what you think because I have no idea. That's weird. That's creepy. <laughs> so <laughs> the into thin air stuff tends to mess with me a lot because typically the like details around it are so so bizarre that it's like I don't know maybe. Maybe his entire family decided to kill him for no reason. <laughs> like, yeah. that's the only thing that could make sense in a lot of these. Um, the, the unexplained stuff tends to keep me up at night. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, have fun. <laughs> I, I wrote all those down. I'm going to look into all what about uh, the, little uh, Jared, Garrett, and Dennis. <laughs> what about the events that Fire in the Sky are based on? That that logger from Oregon or wherever mm. who was disappeared for multiple days, three to five or something. All of his bodies saw the light. They were all out there working, logging. He got separated when, or went to investigate the light, goes missing days later naked and passed the polygraph for whatever that means, you know. Yeah, yeah. But but, but still passed it um, and says he was abducted by aliens and they did gruesome experiments on him. So that that's another one of those cases that's kind of like, yeah, I mean, whatever you say. <laughs> like, it's, a, it's such bizarre, the yeah, circumstances. I can't pin it down. I haven't research that one the way i would like a video topic because i haven't made it but from what little i do know about that case uh my idea around it was always either an intense psychosis <laughs> like from him like maybe maybe he decided to fake the lights in order to trick his friends and then like make up this whole story or whatever either out of some level of wants to be famous i guess or psychosis like i said but even come then on. that's yeah, exactly come when, on when you like, say like, fake, uh, when when you say fake the lights what is can you exactly me like i got a little experience in, in pyrotechnics and such i'd have a hard time fooling y'all but the aliens were over the hill. yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so in this story there were alien lights or you know supposed alien lights that people claim to have seen oh yeah kyle knows like, uh, like again I, I haven't researched him well kyle probably knows there the details was a better than bright I did. light over the hill like a blinding light that they didn't want to investigate because all the other grown men were afraid and this guy's like ho, 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 and runs off and doesn't show up for days <laughs> and when he comes back he's like naked in a phone booth somewhere calling nine one one. um but but yeah the aliens uh, are incredibly sexually aggressive <laughs> they were that, um if you watch that scene it's so upsetting because they're very matter-of-factly like it's like when you see the crocodile hunter with a with an animal like oh look at this fucking measure staple this through its fucking ear yeah they don't feel pain like we do fucking roll them over let's shove a finger or two up his ass see what yeah it's the cloaca yeah mm -hmm. yeah she's almost ready <laughs> yeah yeah did you wash your hands fuck it Roll her over. <laughs> they're being peeled alive on an alien table, screaming, and they're like, "That's just air releasing." From its <laughs> you just feel a sense of pressure, like <laughs> you're just stop <laughs> it, and it's like, "Wow, you know how it's all high pitched like that." Yeah, that's air escaping. <laughs> they breathe it. Yeah, that's I know. <laughs> and then the big inhale, that's air escaping back in. For another, for another escape. <laughs> it escapes the other way now that scene in the movie is one of the scariest movie scenes ever like it's it's terrifying it's one thing to for someone to have you and want to inflict pain on you because they understand it but but to be kidnapped by something that doesn't even have the concept of pain that's just there and, and treating you like another like i don't know like a chunk yeah. of aluminum to be oared out or, or or like an animal to be weighed and measured and cataloged it's real scary and and the actor and that so the aliens don't look like super realistic or anything, mm -hmm. but they're scary. They're yeah. scary to look at. Like they have those. It's the traditional gray aliens with the big heads and everything. But something about them is more predatory, predatory and mean, for lack of a better word. It's like they're aggressively like at one point he's like, Arr! and one of them's like, oh, yeah, give me a handful of this brown muck to shove into its mouth. 
and he's just like, blah, 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 blah. okay, well, that's awful. not even that's not even science. Can you imagine? <laughs> if, like, if you have science, lemur, we can't understand. If you See, have like a thing. lemur on a table that you're torturing, and you're like, we need to get the information from this lemur's uh, biology and its <laughs> metrics, and it's just like, blah, 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 and you're just like, no, nah, that's obnoxious. Put this quick crete in its mouth. Shut it up. <laughs> like, no, now it's not even do. science anymore. That's just a tour. That's just saw six. Like when they really lost the plot. That's just mean. I, that's all that I mean, is. is. I like the idea that to the lemur, a syringe, they're just like, he's just poking us with a sharp stick over and over. Like they don't see any scientific benefit to you stabbing them over and over. So mm -hmm. when, when the thing like, puts a handful of axle grease in his mouth, which is what it looks like. It's yeah. like, uh, it's like they have no idea that this is that max, ma this is magical yeah. axle grease. It tells us everything you need to know about a human. <laughs> 10 out of 10 lemurs hate having their eyelids cut off and mascara smeared into it. For <laughs> <hate that>. <laughs> so this is for, for Wendigo. And I was just poking around your channel recently. And oh boy. you've oh been yeah. leaning, <clears throat> you always do, but like scary stuff. I think that's my favorite of your content is like oh. the, the unnerving spooky things and well, the weirdness. What yeah. would your recommendation like? What's a good rabbit hole for me if I want to get like, like scared and I, and, and if it doesn't matter to me at all, if it's, if I end up at the end and I'm like, I don't buy this or I end up at the end and I'm like, Oh my God, this seems real. Take that out of it. Like just okay. scare me. Is, is there anything specific you're afraid of? Like, is there one kind of fear, one lingering thing that bothers you per se? I'm more afraid of like serial killer style people than I am of like ghosts and uh, okay. and that kind of stuff. So like someone okay. who like tortures people is scary yeah. and like and like unexpectedly like is in your house one day and he kidnaps yeah, you and yeah. tortures you in your basement. That's a lot scarier to me than like, oh, I think I saw an apparition. Like, okay. Uh, I will say some because I've read whenever I did the serial killer series, I read through a lot of transcripts of like evidence that like, you know, initial police crime scene reports of how murders were and like uh, uh, interviews they did with the killer. And some of the worst ones I remember was William Bonin. Um, I forget his real name, but the Golden State Killer. Uh mm -hmm. And the guy who was called like the vampire of Colombia, his name, it was a Spanish name. I forget what it was. Those were the three that when I went through the series, I was like, I was a different person after reading through like everything that they did. Um, okay. I'm not familiar uh, with this guy, William Bonin. What, yeah. What is... So, so William Bonin, uh, let me make sure I'm saying that name right. Or William Bonin, perhaps. Yeah, is, is it the guy who looks like me? He has long hair when you look at the picture. Cause everyone made that joke. He, uh, yes, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. William a little Bonin. bit. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> everyone made that joke. Uh, yeah. William, uh, William Bonin was a child murderer who, what he would do is he, he had a couple accomplices who, if I remember correctly, were guys who were like either I can't remember if they were mentally ill or if they were younger and just kind of like he kind of suckered them into what he was doing. It started mm -hmm. out as like, hey, we're going to rob some people. And then eventually it got to child murder. But he had this van he would drive around in and he would get kids. He'd, he'd find like these boys who were like 14, 15. It's like, hey, you want to go to a party? We're going to have like beer and stuff. And he'd get the kids to hop in the van. Yeah, there it is. That's the picture everyone says looks like me. Um, he'd get the kids to hop in the van. And he would, it was in California. He would just take them down some back road. And like the the details of what he did to these children are to all manner of depraved uh, for hours on end. And then like to, the part that I remember, because, like, you know, I read about a lot of stuff like that, where it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, he, he did X, Y, Z to the boys and then, uh, he would strangle them, I think, was the way he'd kill them. Um, but he would take stuff from them and then use it later as a joke. Like one of the accomplices said that uh, there's one boy he killed who had like $40 on him. So he kept the $40. And the next time they picked up a kid, they're like, hey, you want McDonald's? So they go and get McDonald's. And he's using the $40 and poking his accomplice like, hey, remember where this came from? Isn't that funny? And like, like just like Jesus, so just not sadistic. Just, yeah, not just depravity, but like relishing in it, like how much he enjoyed mm -hmm. it. Like, and when he was caught, like no regret, uh, just like, well, there it is, you know. Um, yeah. 
I, I think no, it might have been him. It might have been someone else, but I'm pretty sure it was him that while he was in jail, he wrote letters to the mothers of the kids he killed talking about how much he enjoyed killing them. Like, yeah, like, I know that uh, Albert Fish did that. Albert Fish did in that, the yep. in the late 1800s, like in yeah, his, that, the Albert that Fish guy. letters are so <laughs> fucking depressed. We, we've talked about yeah. it on this show years and years ago, like he like kidnapped, murdered and then like eight children. Yeah. And then he would write letters to the parents of those children bragging about how how he maneuvered their kid, what he did to them before, how he cooked them, how delicious they were, mm -hmm. thanking them for it. Like like the most over like if you were if if Albert Fish was a character in a movie today, you'd go, I can't get into this. It's unrealistic. He's way, he's way too over the top. It's unrealistic. Yeah. You know, extreme. at least tamp it down to a Joffrey or a Ramsey. This guy's over the top. I can't buy <laughs> into this. Like but they're real it's a good reminder like evil like, like there are evil people like there are people who yeah not only are indifferent but they get off on that, harming others that, that guy albert fish he was so messed up that when he was in court uh he asked to be executed by guillotine because he said if he was able to hear the blood rush from his neck for a split second when it happened that would be the best pleasure he could ever experience like mm -hmm. just a, an animal just like oh, a yeah. monster yeah he, he yeah. was like independent like he was sadistic and masochistic. So yes. like he would yep. torture the shit out of children. And then he would like put his penis and testicles like on top of his kitchen table and nail it to the table. Yep. yep. Like he that. Would, like, and he so he was a lunatic in places. Yeah. He was, uh, yeah, yeah that, that guy needed to be put down. That's a fun, like little yep. story right before bed. Highly recommended. <laughs> Albert, Albert Fish. Very, look very into him. Read, his, read the Albert Fish letter. It's reprehensible. Uh, but but yeah, so so like th those, those are good serial... suggestions. I got them pulled up now. Look, at I remember liking that book in school. Um, was it Into the Wild? Chris McCandless, the oh, guy, the one who, where like, the guy like yep. dies yeah. in the woods. I, I made remember... a video. I made a video about that guy. Really? Did he? I remember eat my uh, poison my... potatoes or something. He there's a lot of potatoes. there's a lot of theories. Uh, you're talking about why he died, right? Yeah, uh, that's one of the main theories. The poison potatoes, or there was a kind of like beetroot in the area that he ate that there was like a specific strain of that would make you sick or whatever. I mean, really, what killed him was that it got a lot colder than he was expecting. Yeah. But I thought like, you were going to say pride. Yeah, I mean, in essence, it's, it's like Chris McCandless is an interesting one. He didn't really value his life as far as like the actual living or like the the longevity of it. He was very clear in his writings that he just valued the experience, like to, to do say, something others haven't. My favorite mm -hmm. of his writings is that sign he left by his van that says, please fucking help if you find this. Not a mm -hmm. joke. God save me. Very mm -hmm. weak. Can't, a, can't, can't hike out. Foraging for berries. <laughs> it's something like that. Yeah. Bears are yeah. salivating. Yeah, yeah. A, it says like, uh, if I'm not here, I'm out foraging, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, did he? Weak his his journal so sad. Like the last few days of his life. Like, oh man, breaks I, my heart, I but, don't know his story very well, but I choose to believe his journal has story after story of him diddling himself in honor of Anne Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I can't spare the liquid, but let's shake one out. Loads time. getting smaller and smaller. I'll, I'll forage tomorrow. <laughs> it's me day. <laughs> down to my last, down to my last bottle of lock and load. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that i just remember like that guy wasn't a wildlife <laughs> survival expert uh -uh. it would be like me going out there and starting a journal and being like day one i'm avoiding the very colorful plants but i'm starting <laughs> to get hungry it's, it's like it's like day one hour four it's hunger's setting in <laughs> I haven't seen a sun barbecue in an hour. hour. <laughs> the twenty-piece nugget I brought with me is running low. <laughs> what, don't you just hate it when you get a twenty-piece? They only give you one dipping sauce. And who thought that ranch, warm ranch, was a good dipping sauce? I, warm ranch. I wish I had service. I keep them one stone. <laughs> yeah, that's that basically what his over. fucking book was just fail after fail we're going to hunt for rabbits today those fuckers are quick like, <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, craziest, the craziest thing is while he was in uh, he took pictures on a handheld camera all he had with it was a 22 rifle while he was in Alaska he killed a moose 
He like took yeah, pictures right. with it. Like how how on earth was this guy like hiding in a tree and like yeah. dropped down on yeah. it? <laughs> You'd have to shoot moose. it in the fucking head or the heart or something. Yeah, but, like I yeah. I don't I don't even I've never seen a moose in person, but mm. I understand from the internet that they are colossal beyond. They're like their backs like you, seven feet high. Yeah, they can yeah. fuck. So I I don't yeah. know if a twenty two rifle can cut through enough thick muscle to get to the heart of a goddamn moose. So yeah, you might yeah. have to shoot it in the eye. I don't know. Because if you hit its skull at the wrong angle, I think it'll literally skim off. Like, it'll just ride mm-hmm. under the skin and d- dink off its head. I mean, oh look at that. Gosh. Because big, like keep parts <laughs> of its skull not. are extra armored by the, the antlers and, and, and where they grow under the skin. Shooting that thing effectively and killing it with a twenty two rifle, let's say we've got five shots, not 50. Yeah, it's not like a yeah. Ruger, if we got a Ruger 1022 with like a box magazine. I think it might have a bad day. I think it had a bolt action. Bolt yeah. action would be it would be like in the video games when you try to do something like that and it, <laughs> yeah. you anger it and it kills you, <laughs> or more likely it just run away and you'd never see or hear of it again. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. A, well, it's a like crazy accomplishment get to the kill job that. Done. I mean, slowly, but where? Oh, it'd run you away. Hit, you hit it in the eye or like You'd the hurt. side of the head. How far would it get with a bullet through its lungs? Oh, lung. I, I, I think I'm pretty sure Chris. Hit ha- a long way. A long yeah. way. With a 22 bullet through its lung, it would run beyond. It, you'd never find it. Like I've shot deer and, and lost them, you know, with a bow hunting. Like, and that was a deer. This thing will yeah. run further than a deer. I can run upwards of yeah. eight miles an hour. That won't keep up with a I, I think Chris. <laughs> in, the, no. in the wilderness. And what if you catch it? <laughs> that's a wolf on the right like that, <laughs> yeah yeah and those wolves are pretty big um, with a collar yeah the people keep pet wolves up there that's a thing you can do yeah. uh chris uh i'm pretty sure he killed it with a knife if i recall correctly really which like uh good on him like I, i'm you good. know what i have seen that's really big bison i've seen those in person <clears throat> those yeah. are huge yeah. yes i've seen those too yeah. i think maybe <laughs> uh in the smoky mountains they have uh like a nature reserve park mm-hmm. thing, and they have bison there, perhaps. Yeah, um, I, I may have been to the same place, but I've also saw them when I did that motorcycle trip on the Tat. They're just mm-hmm. wild, like yeah. they're free grazing uh, bison. And out in Texas, I've seen dog. a bunch of. I, I don't even know the names of like <laughs> right the various the discover- like the things that aren't antelopes but kind of are exactly. <laughs> so the uh, according to like childhood like science or, or science class there's like there's antelope and buffalo let's move along <laughs> there's like there's like 50 species of hooved animal in africa and so mm. that dude had it's like, oh that's a kudu and that's a <laughs> that's a himalayan kudu you see how its horns are black and spire it's like all these weird what, fast and jumpy or something deer. like that that's what that's mm. what it's name. so many different kinds of weird goats and deer and 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 stuff there that i've seen the coolest thing was that fucking camel i wanted that camel it was eight thousand dollars what are you gonna do with a camel though <laughs> what a Wait, where, nightmare you see that a camel for sale <laughs> eight thousand uh, dollars and then keeping Texas, it alive is a thousand dollars a month yeah you can so for eight grand you could shoot it and like that's what it's you know if you wanted to because it's on a hunting preserve it's like I mean, if you want to. camel hunting <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah exactly are they even um, good to the, eat oh, oh, sure. delicious it's what the most the succulent name? meat in arabia <laughs> <laughs> i probably but are they, they say a sultan <laughs> would trade five steaks <laughs> yeah, right? for a camel steak <laughs> it's camel. i mean it i don't know horse is probably know. good and it's just like a shittier horse yeah i i don't know i i, I still think horse would be awful dry. I I, i've thought dry, of, yeah, right? yeah 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 I, I guarantee you it's like jerky texture it What's cannot in the be hump that good of a camel really? is Water. it just fat it's it's fat yeah, yeah. it's fat yeah not with water. a lot of <laughs> no, <I'm> <laughs> you think it was like a canteen <laughs> yeah i thought it was like a canteen i mean i didn't think it was literally like you could pop the side of it with a straw it sounds but like i you thought did. it was some sort of <laughs> 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 i was like was so impressive i didn't, I didn't think that it was like a drop straw a with the camel <laughs> you're having your own chickens don't fuck moment <laughs> <laughs> that'll never happen you don't you still don't know where chickens come from <laughs> <laughs>
I'm Nobody almost does. positive. Vertical titties? They come from eggs. Zach says they're vertical titties. And I'm no, they're, they're not mammary. They're not mammary glands. Those oh, are still they on are. their belly. They no, are. no, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> Don't so try that either, desert? Kyle. Yes, Don't try are. that. The they will not like it. <laughs> Maybe. Um, they like it when you. So, the, the, but the camel's name was Sushi, and it was like Sushi, and the fucking thing would come running like a dog, and you could feed it carrots. And you it wanted to shoot pretty. it? No, I wanted to own it. I wanted oh, to okay. like live at my dad's farm and like I wanted to go. I thought you said it was on a hunting preserve. Like 50. It, it was, was, but the, he has his pets on the reserve too. Oh, know, okay. So well, that's a horrible a idea. <laughs> Why well, leave your pets on a hunting reserve? <laughs> well, no, but, all right, let me just say this. If you accidentally <laughs> shoot, shoot the camel, <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck, Dave? It's a camel. <laughs> what were you here to shoot again, Mike? I forgot. I, I forgot. thought that's what you were describing. I thought you were like, you it's here, a camel uh, hunting trip. <laughs> deer hunting. Mike, you're not going to believe here, it. Mike. Mike just killed the craziest boar you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike, I, Zach's that? right about the vertical titties thing, because I bit it without foreplay, and it didn't go over. Yeah. <laughs> you know, camel you're was definitely lighting. mad. And for what I know of women, probably. <laughs> I don't know why you guys are down on horse meat. I bet horse meat tastes good. The French eat horses no, and they're great no. at cooking. Isn't the fat content? Have you, uh, for one, have you had like French cuisine, like true French cuisine? That's I've never been like, to France. I've yeah, had horse. Yeah. It's like they're the people who thought eating live snails would be a great idea. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like that was just like arrogance on their part. They were like, <laughs> we're so good at like, cheeses them. and and like desserts that we're going to make <clears throat> snails good. And mm-hmm. still eating they probably them. are good. I, I'd eat snails, I'd, I'd give them a go. No, um, you no, my, no, I don't. I, I don't think I could bring myself. I don't do think like I could bring myself to eat anything alive. I do like. Yeah, oysters. I love oysters. I, w- I it, would eat dead snails, but like the way I hear escargot traditionally served, they're always alive. Oh, really? Oh, hey. I, I would. I would prefer them to be dead. I, I thought they yeah. were all dead. Ah, oh, right. yeah. we're gonna. I've had that escargot. escargot. It was definitely not alive. I'm gonna check that. Am I wrong? Yeah, you I've, I've always alive. heard that traditional, like French so, escargot in the U.S. is cooked. I'd eat cooked escargot. I would yeah, wager, and, and again, I, I only know what the YouTube people teach me. Um, I would wager that snails carry some sort of weird parasites, and eating mm-hmm. them raw, well, you could end up with some sort of a fucking worm in your brain that tells you that you're the devil. Yeah, yeah you so should cook I'm them. gonna only eat baked. Escargot. And, then, and then we've got out, got to get out the key of Solomon, and it's going to be a whole deal. And it's, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, you have yeah. to go See, through. Make sure you're not possessed. Imagine exactly, if yeah. Wendigoon went crazy, like legitimately, like. Wearing clown makeup and showing up crazy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and and that crazy utilized all of the weird darkness that he's read into, all of theology, all of the demonology, fictional and non-fictional. Not that some of it's real in the like brick and mortar way per se, but some of it was meant written right, right. At, to mm-hmm. be real. They're like, yeah, this is how I fucking call on demons. And they mm-hmm. it really was, you know. That, he could be a real scary guy. Like if he ever <laughs> snapped and had that 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 cold sweat down his brow moment where he's just sort of <laughs> fucking twitching so, out and that you would just scary I, uh, I Googled it. I couldn't find any source that said they were served alive. They all talked about how they were like they, their intestines were cleared while they're still alive and they're cooked alive, but not mm. served alive. It, okay. All right, I don't all care right. about a snail being <laughs> cooked alive. They don't even feel, they just feel fresh. <laughs> <laughs> just, just put that True. quick s- cement in their mouth. Wait, wait, wait. What? Air escaping. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather have horse than escargot anyway. Lots of cuts of lean meat are still good. Like, it, okay. I'm not saying that horse would be. You in are the same on this horse train. Cow. You are staying on it, bro. They look. use horse in sausages, like like hard salami like sausages. Like they mix it in with pork and lamb or whatever. In a lot of countries, I've had sausage, and then I was like, "Where did this come from again?" I got like a sausage sampler, and it had horse meat in it. It said horse on the back, or or maybe it didn't say horse, but it said like the food industry word for horse. And it was like, <laughs> wait, what? What's that? Equine. What's that meat? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. But I've. I bet cares. Taylor, you live in a major city. You could get exotic food if you wanted. I could. I, I could get meats. some some exotic meats. I would try horse. I don't even know how it's served. I doubt it's like horse steaks. I bet it's something something else. Zach, find us some horse steaks. I would like personally. I would like horse sausage, or like like I could do sort of a charcuterie with, um, or maybe some some sort of breakfast sausage with that's like 
fifty percent horse, thirty percent pork, twenty percent, you know, just pork fat or something. I don't know. I bet it Maybe looks it. almost exactly like a. You know, well, you know what? Now that yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, of, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I could eat a horse. You, you, thank you. <laughs> um, I was, I was like ragging on horse meat for being lean, but it can't be that much leaner than like deer meat, right? I bet it's like the same nothing level can, of lean as Nothing that. can yeah. be leaner than rabbit meat, though. That's true. And rabbit can be pretty good. So. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You got to sauce oh, up no. rabbit, though. Maybe, like maybe nice you've turned me sauce. around a little bit, Dale, or maybe I'll go hunt a horse. That's not how you Do eat it. a brace of conies. <laughs> Jeez, that's <laughs> not how you eat a brace of conies. <laughs> a at, brace of conies. Right, at, I need to at, rewatch uh, that. Yes, <laughs> add time. I keep saying, I, Thank you for the The reminder. leanest meat available is Kyle's Tinder profile. <laughs> 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 he is lean. He's so I'd, lean. He's like, I'd, all I'd eat a, skin lean. I'd eat a slice of Kyle. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't I want, want to eat him alive all the, because all he's probably rife with parasites. Like, all that yeah, test want, that you get in there, though, I don't know. That'd be pretty, <laughs> 2022 <laughs> Taylor is where the good aggressive. meat is, right there. That's that's what you oh, want. Oh yeah, <laughs> you want that? Just an absurd amount of marbling. The kind of steaks that you have to turn right. on its side just to render down that Ooh. giant band. Is this human cheese fed? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's entirely cheese fed. It's like, that's cruel. That's cruel. How could you do that? It's like he did it to himself. <laughs> we found him this way, trust me. <laughs> you held down this poor man and fed him nothing but cheese for you. Man. It's like, no, he's a free range cheeseman. <laughs> we gave him all the freedom in the world and he free, signed his own death certificate. Free range cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love cheese. I can eat cheese all day. I was talking to my dad about Waco the other day. Uh, like, like uh, I don't think that those people were doing anything wrong in there. You know, the government story, we believed it back then because everybody believed it when the government said somebody was a pedophile. But like, <laughs> they were like, yeah, there's a comp, there's this compound full of pedophiles that don't want to pay their taxes and we're going to go get them. Yeah. And I was like, wait, what? Well, they've got yeah. the, that was a weird like when I, I never level? really cared it that much, cult, but I looked into right? it and it looked ridiculous. Um, so well, they, they called it a cult, it was a religion. But I don't know. It was uh, the Branch Davidians uh, or the Church. Oh Davidians. yeah, that's a cult. Yeah. yeah. Oh come well, on. <laughs> kind of. What was the name of your church, Taylor? The Branch Davidians. <laughs> That's how I know I'm an inside man. <laughs> they did have an inside man that ratted him out, um, who actually went back later and said he regretted doing it uh, in the court case that followed. Um, I've considered doing a Waco video for a long time now. Um, I just I have to get my language right because it's real easy for me to get fired up about stuff like that. So I just yeah. gotta like tame myself as I go into it. Um, uh, yeah. Easy for you to fly too close to the sun. Of very the easy. Yeah. Yeah. Do, uh, Way too close to the might sun. Might get a little too real. Do, uh, <laughs> and, and if you don't, if you want one that's more cut and dry, though, you could just do Ruby Ridge. Um, that, that's, yeah. Oh, that's, oh boy, will I? <laughs> Are you working yeah. on a Ruby Ridge video? Um, I, I'm not gonna do a Waco video without bringing up Ruby Ridge. Um, because it's the it was the same negotiation team at both. So great, great job, guys. Um, oh, I didn't even know that. They, yep, they got to keep their job. Yeah, they got promoted. Uh, as a matter of fact, the guy who was the uh, not the lead negotiator, the lead of the fire team at Waco, was given a promotion to captain, I believe, after the events of Waco. Oh, that seems he was well viewed, yeah. He was viewed in the media as taking down a dangerous group of uh, radicals, uh, yeah. even though yeah. the everyone who was on the ground said that he had actually killed, what was it, 82 children? Uh, yeah, like something that. along those lines. And he got a star pinned on his chest. And everyone said that they didn't know that years since and regretted it. However, there are pictures of them posing with their rifles next to the bodies of children. Uh, so don't think they exactly cared that much. Um, yeah, Like I said, see, it's easy for me to do that. <laughs> and get no, I, that those children bit. could have been I'm enemy done. combatants. They could, they could have, you know. They had little up. guns. <laughs> <laughs> little right. guns and little, little grenades. Well, hey, look, at the, <laughs> look at this skeleton. He's clearly armed. Zap. <laughs> Nerfs of now, mass destruction. One of the wildest things from that footage from uh, from the the Waco thing is there's an FBI agent, maybe two, on a on like a landing. They're like they've gone up one floor up a ladder, and they're on this landing. And now there's like a, a wall with that's the second floor with windows, mm -hmm. and they've got guns. And I think he got, they got, he's got an MP5. I think I remember in his hand. And all of a sudden, machine gun fire comes from inside 
through the wall and you can see the mm. bullet holes coming out and you know and in, in the movie in the movies they'll like cut a circle in a door but like you can't really do that in most of the time and i i know i did it but like like you can't normally do that <laughs> but you weren't about to commit an atrocity yeah. <laughs> but this guy from the inside is like and you see the bullets pop 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 and the fbi guy is like down and rolling and he does not care that he's a floor up and and i you can imagine if you're getting shot at and you're 12 feet off the ground you're like the ground is not i would love to eat some ground right now so <laughs> yeah. he just, he just right off the roof of that building but I'd never that's some shit that I've only ever seen in movies. You know, that 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 it's a trope where the bullet holes come through the wall in sequence mm -hmm. in this perfect line. But they did it. It was wild. It had to be an AK or something like that in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Um uh, I I know a guy who runs a merch store who a merch store and one of the pictures he has on the merch store is the ATF agent falling off the roof holding his chest and it says, Have a nice day across it. Um <laughs> but yeah that like there's I get so five dollars every one wow <laughs> that's so insensitive uh, to members of the atf yeah who, who, who we all love established people oh speaking of ruby ridge the only person uh the only <laughs> atf agent who was convicted or any investigation who was done during that time was the sniper who took the shot that killed vicky weaver um he was being charged by the state of idaho and the fed said this is our case we'll deal with it so they picked it up and then as soon as Idaho dropped their case, the feds dropped their case and he was never charged or given anything. So Ugh. funny how that works. Yeah, it's pretty gross. I would also suggest some like like cult leaders are often kind of treated as like a hee hee ha ha, like a goofy. Like, isn't this guy quirky? Like, even if there mm -hmm. were murders, it's like, wow, these people were so dumb or whatever. But when you read about like some of the ways that cult leaders indoctrinated uh, people around them. It is depressing. Like uh, uh, Ervil LeBaron, he was one of the guys. He, he's not, a lot of people misunderstand LeBaron as being like a founder of Mormonism. He was okay. famous because in the early days of Mormonism, he got kicked out and started like a whole cult separate to Mormonism. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, he he was like a big practicer of poly polygamy and stuff like that. And what he would do is he had a theory that he pulled out of the Old Testament and he called it uh blood redemption i think it's blood redemption blood sacrilege something like that and it was the idea that some people were so sinful in their lives the only way that they could go to heaven is if they're murdered uh by righteous people and like a prayer said over them or whatever so what ervil would do is if there was like say for he had like you know 20 wives or whatever mm -hmm. and say one of the daughters of one of those wives disagreed with him or tried to leave he would go to the mother of that girl and be like hey do you want your daughter to go to heaven you're gonna have to kill her and like he would talk these poor these poor delusional people into murdering family members because he said it's the only way they could get into the gates and like yeah. reading that reading uh the testimonies of people who were in that group Oh my word! Some of the most terrifying stuff yeah. ever. That that guy was absolutely evil. Um, but yeah, a lot. There's a lot of cult leaders like that who are very messed up. Who are some uh, other interesting? Uh, some other cult lead. I I'm woefully misinformed or uninformed, I guess, on so much of the cult shit. Hmm. I I don't yeah. know enough about that. Heaven's Gate is about like the extent of of yep. what I've looked into. But that's like the Beatles of cults. Like, and so like, you can't really say like, Oh yeah, I'm into cults. And it's like, oh, na name three cults. Oh, Heaven's gate. Name their album. Name three of their albums. Yeah, Go name ahead. Three yeah. Of their albums idiot. Oh man, I've been called out. So I need, I need to find a better one, but like you're, you're a million percent right about the whole cult thing of people being smarmy and smug. Like these idiots, they, they didn't know. It's like, these fools, people who these are in people. like influence circles cults like they can't see outside it by yeah. design all of their interactions and the social cost of disagreement are incorporated into that if yeah. they had a robust yeah. system and network of people who weren't involved in that cult then it would be easier like that's why the first step of any cult or like indoctrination is separating you from your family yeah. separating you from your friends making you believe that nothing can be trusted except for what is said here and when you're surrounded by a bunch of people who have done the same thing you know they've oh, t tony he distanced from his family and his friends and he hasn't had an issue with it what what what's wrong with you are are, are you not bought in do you not believe what we believe like those like those kind of social you're not gonna manipulations let it down, are yeah. you 
you're not you're, yeah. you're one of us you're not going to go against it yeah that happens mm -hmm. all the time you you like, pretty much uh your only friends and family are us now and you're, you're disappointing us like what's going to happen th th there's this weird misconception for you, and a lot of it's just because you know they don't know any better but there's mm -hmm. this misconception a lot of people have that like happy people who were doing well in life join cults but it's almost never that it's yeah. like uh, i don't know if i've talked about them before I know it was on a podcast. I don't think it was on PKA. I talked about uh, the Ant Hill Kids. Did I did I do this diatribe? I, I, I don't recall the Ant Hill Kids. No. Okay. Tell so us about it. The Ant Hill Kids were a cult Ant in Hill. the '70s. It was either the '60s or '70s. They were led by a guy named Roche Thoreau. Um, Roche, I think it's it's either Rock or Roche. Uh, it's a French name. Roche was a pastor in i forget what denomination of church it was some branch of christianity for seventh day adventist seventh yes thank you seventh day adventist um before he broke off and then up in uh french canada began this farm um and what he would do is he would go to these people in bars uh he would pray apparently for women like near like um uh, uh, hospitals like women who had miscarriages like he was seeking out people who were in the worst point of their life and he'd, and he'd effectively start with the ev uh, the evangelist thing of like, hey, Jesus loves you. Uh, do you want a home? Do you want a community? Mm -hmm. And he started inviting people to this farm he was effectively building up in the mountains. And he did this for years. So for years, it was just a group of people who had nowhere to go. They were completely lost. And then someone offers them food, shelter, and friendship. And it was years of that before it became what it eventually turned into. And that's how people get indoctrinated to mm -hmm. the point that they join and become a part of a cult. It's not just like, and I want to be abused by you know some charismatic yeah. figure. But like Roche was, it, it was a very slow decline. Uh, the first step of it, I believe, is he started having them do labor. Like, okay, you go work and I'll stay here and run things. And people were like, yeah, that makes sense. And it's like, hey, do you care to help build like the houses around here? And they're like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then it started to be like, I think I need to have children with the women here. And the single women were like, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I'm down for it. But then the mm -hmm. husbands were like, hey, you know, I could give my wife to this guy. Uh, so then he has all these children that are his. And then after, I think the cult, there was a period of time he went to jail and like every day, all of them would come to the jail and talk to him. Um, he went to jail for like several months. I think the cult lasted for about 15 years. And by the end of it, th there were so many violence scenarios that happened. But one of the more intense ones was a woman tried to run away after I think he had forced himself on her. I can't remember the scenario. But she tried to run away, and it was it was in the middle of Canada in the winter, so it was freezing. And these men brought her back, and he, in front of everyone, he dragged her onto, like, he had, like, a church set up. Uh, he dragged mm -hmm. her to the altar, pulled a hatchet, and cut her arm off at the front of, uh, at the front of the room in front of everyone. And no one did anything. They were just like, yeah, she, she went against us. What else are we going to do? And, you know, she's crying and screaming. And then he just puts down the axe and holds her and starts patting her like, shh, it's OK. And everyone was just like, yeah, this is this is fine. This is what uh, happens when you mess with what the happens. cult leader. The, the, thing that, yeah, the, the thing that eventually did them in was uh, a woman died during... It was something like she got sick or she got cut. And I, I forget the details, but Roche did something like he ordered someone to put a bag over her mouth or something like that. He did. He ordered them to do something that got her killed. And then there was a period of time where they tried to hide her body and then her family came looking for her and eventually everything got found out. Oh, it was the woman who got her arm cut off. She escaped while the police were investigating and she went to the police, told them what happened and uh, all of them got arrested. But yeah, these people were conditioned over the, period of over a decade to be like yeah if you know he wants to cut her arm off like you know that's his right that's what we get and that that's scary to read about like situations like that where people yeah. are absolutely at the will of some madman and you have to from? uh the remember person? like oh. like something else with it is like the longer someone is in a cult or in like one of those circles the more like sunk cost is involved yeah. and so yeah. like someone who's in a cult for two days is a lot more likely to be talked out of it if you've mm -hmm. been in there for years like that is your life uh, yeah. leaving that is not only changing your whole life and uprooting yourself it's also an admission that you were fooled 
And I don't remember who said it, but it's a lot easier to fool people than to convince them they've been fooled. And so like you, yeah. you spend five years in a cult, like that's your fucking life. Like that's you're it. not going to yeah. let anything separate you from that because those are your friends. That's your family. So what it's what are we cult defining cult. as cults? Like, like what, what, how do you know it's a cult? Like you, someone tells you, uh, Hey, Hey Taylor, look, I found myself. There's this group of people. They got a new way of doing things and I like it. And for the first time in my life, I feel at peace. You know what? I'm leaving my job behind. I'm putting all my money into this. We all did. And look, hey, I am definitely not the richest guy there, buddy. I'm going to tell you that right now. We're pulling a lot of money together so we can all just live in fucking harmony. And that's all there is to it. I mean, there's a guy in charge. Yeah. And he takes a cut. <laughs> but but Father Michael keeps us together. He keeps us guided on the path of the that God wanted us to be on, the one he originally wanted us to be on. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? No owls. And <laughs> and it's a good place. Like, what do you say to this guy? I mean, I, it's hard because like so much of like the cult part is the insistence on removal of yourself socially from your existing connections. So yeah, if, part, if, if, if you were inviting me and you were like, yeah, bring your family, bring your friends, like we meet up every week and we're going to hang out and we do this, I'd be like, okay, this isn't a cult. They're not trying to separate me from my life. If you were like, hey, you know, in addition to this, Taylor, I think you should come stay on this compound with me for a while. No, just you, just you. I don't think your parents and your friends, I don't think they're, I don't think they're bought in yet, honestly. Do you think they are? No, I don't think they're like you and I, I agree. But yeah, come on. Uh, I guess. Then I'd be like, okay, like this guy's trying to fucking put layers between me and the people I'm familiar with. This is a cult. Hmm. I've never, uh, I've never seen anything like that, honestly. Um, I'm, I'm glad that I was never cool enough, I guess, to be invited to a call. <laughs> I haven't been they invited have, either. Not even the clan. Like, like I remember um, my dad told me. How many, how many that, clansmen are there? Like 13 FBI agents? <laughs> like, 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 who, who the fuck is in the clan in 2023? Unironically. Like, what what, what, he, did, what, so what he did have a cult question that got cut off. Uh, do you remember? I was asking was? about how the money worked. Good. Oh, for for uh, the, the cult, kids? yeah, like like well, in in general, like how do they oh, get people to give up their resources and give them to someone? I like it. If, like... So it it depends on the cult. Sometimes they'll have a few benefactors. Like <laughs> sometimes they'll convince a couple rich guys, and that's where most of the money comes from. Sometimes, like I don't think Waco was a cult to the degree people say it was, but it's definitely a cult in some branch regard. Davidians, eh? Mm -hmm. The branch Davidians, yeah. Um, the way that they did it is that Koresh just stayed at the compound but everyone worked in town and there was you know like how i know it was a cult fun. how's that because they're called the branch davidians and, you know, correct, as, a kid, as, a, as a kid that rolls off the tongue uh, on the newscast you don't ever stop to think about what it means hmm. david koresh leads the davidians they, like yeah. is, you know what i mean like like it's a cult um the, the real question about that is were they sexually abusing children and fostering an environment in which that was to be normal and commonplace or did the fbi lie about that after they burnt all those children alive i so from all the research all the the stories i've read on the topic i do think the fbi fostered the story uh there were several cps uh investigations before all of that went down they were never able to turn up any evidence and everyone who was a part of it vehemently attested that that didn't happen um that was i say it's 50 50 i'm 50 50 on it. here's why i just think any uh, Man, it just seems like historically and from every example we ever have, whenever you have some dude who's running a cult, he's he's it's all about pussy and it ends up being about pussy for some reason. We haven't been able to put our finger on that one here yet, with, <laughs> despite all our study um, and, uh, <laughs> research expert Woody here. He's delved deep and hard and, and he hasn't come up with as deep as I can. Yet. I don't mean to brag. I mean, yeah, it hurts <laughs> after a while. So they, but, but I don't know what they were. I don't know if that was the case or not, but I'd say 50 50. It was right. It just seems like it almost always that's what's well, going on, even, even with it, like our the good religions, the ones that we pretend aren't cults. It's like that's what's going on there, yeah. too. I'm going to balance that out. I'm going to say zero uh, percent chance they were doing that. And it was the oh. FBI lion. So now, now the average the is, is back. No, I, have, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have done no research. I have no idea. Okay, so let me tell you about this. So here's what I saw on the news. And I don't I don't know if this was the FBI being like, oh, look at these. Look at what we found. It was like a kid's sort of informational pamphlet that you would hand to like i don't know a kid to prepare them for their sexual life that's that's coming right around the corner like, like you know, the, your body is changing 
like that. No, kind more of like uh, David's gonna fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you may You're notice so hair. Lucky. <laughs> you may notice hair where there wasn't hair before. You may notice a man named David walking into your room erect at night and demanding <laughs> things of you. This is all part of becoming a woman. <laughs> yeah so i saw those pamphlets on the news and the que- the only question is like if you could find out those were fake um i i feel like that's the little, so little piece of evidence that I, to me so, so i uh I, I looked into the pamphlets and from every article i read that was not evidence that was brought forward by any state department that was entirely mentioned by news sources and never backed by anything yikes uh, all the cult mm. members said that it's kind of like you remember how after like well I I was too young to remember but looking back after 9/11 they were like oh and we found the the hijacker's passport in the wreck yeah. <laughs> like that whole like no you didn't what are you talking about <laughs> like it was kind of like that the news is like hey I know what we can do to be sensational for the next half hour sure um mm. so to, from everything I read that's where that the pamphlet come were. from like where'd it come I, from? Someone made that shit. Someone printed it off of a printer. Someone stapled it together. Someone did, someone drew those little stick figure children. You know what I mean? Someone wrote it. No. And the only answer that that comes to mind is that's the sort of thing that our government does sometimes when they're taking somebody down, like a political figure or something like that. They make yeah. those sorts of false evidences famously. Yeah. Like if you look at the sort of things they were doing to Martin Luther King or or, or uh, Malcolm X or um, you know, even we talked about, you know, it's people we don't like as well. It's not like they're just picking on civil rights leaders also like fidel castro just mm-hmm. all those wily coyote stunts they tried to pull making his beard fall out making him yep. be on lsd during his speeches mm-hmm. all that craziness like this is something like one of the conspiracy rabbit holes like i keep trying to go down but i can't find anything good for it so like antarctica what the mm-hmm. fuck is going on down there and why if you so like there there are military bases down there like okay. lots of countries have military bases down there. And if you show up in Antarctica, they will kill you. They will shoot you in the head. They'll like, as you're like, if you just start, if you just take a boat to Antarctica, get off and start walking around, they will kill you. Like, you I didn't know, I did not know about this. Yeah. I didn't know about this at all. And I was Are like, you, well, I, what the fuck? What's going on? Is now? that, first of all, did you get that from a good source? I, I didn't know that. Is that true? Yeah, it came to me in a dream. I... <laughs> <laughs> He's got my vote. <laughs> now I know. It, uh... That'd be the worst it... source I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's like, no, there's like, this is like not like I saw some like the, the conspiratorial part is like, oh, there's a, something under the ice out there and there's like an underground uh, civilization or the remains of Atlantis, that kind of thing or whatever. Maybe not Atlantis. Maybe I'm making that up. Maybe. But like the part that's not really debated is like, yeah, you cannot go to Antarctica. Like you can't go there. You they'll they'll shoot you. Yeah. So uh, I've heard of people. Uh, I, I don't know if it's immediately they just <laughs> execute you from what I've heard. They're like, leave get off um because you can't privately make your way to antarctica uh because there's like it, there's some weird treaty with antarctica it's called the i forget the word for it essentially no nation can place ownership over it or mm-hmm. like it's all uh, scientific go, research place effect yeah it's all scientific research which but is I don't the think reason law that, that, they but that implies there's no law there technically so i, I think they're going to have a hard time arresting me under any real I, yeah, I, maybe I, I maritime law is maritime i don't law think law? it's illegal I, I think it's a very gray area. They're just like get out, essentially. They consider me a pirate uh, if I like grab my uh, my retarded Malamute and started sledding deep into the, <laughs> the Antarctic <laughs> center. Uh, you and wouldn't search. be sledding deep. <laughs> Look, he's a big boy. God damn it, he, he is dick. strong. He has the power of three normal dogs. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's he has three no dog loud, power. No loud noises though. Um, <laughs> so the conspiracy around Antarctica begins with World War II. Um, <laughs> There, <laughs> there uh, was a German research base in Antarctica called Camp something, rather, I forget, but some number designation. Anyway, after the war was over, in 1947, they sent a admiral by the name of Admiral Byrd to Antarctica in something called Operation High Jump, where he was sent with, I think, 20 men total to just like reconnoiter, investigate whatever the Germans were doing down there to uh, check out their facilities. And whenever they got back, uh, they were all given a gag order and the Medal of Honor. Um, 
and that that's it. <laughs> so they were, they were all for, given a gag order in the metal. All of them were given the metal. Bar? Th- they were they were placed on like a forty eight hour debrief, if I recall correctly. They were ordered to never speak about what they found, which that part's you know probably pretty standard to yeah. most you know military we can order yeah, operations. I think you did. I think what? they stopped Hitler from being able to acquire alien technology down there, and they they brought it home. Now we're on the right path. I, I, don't, I don't think. I don't think. Hitler <laughs> I think Hitler was down there. Get. I. So. So my favorite. Antarctica. My favorite conspiracy theory. The ones. The, the one that I crave to be real is the ancient civilizations one. The one. And and when they lay out the timeline of the Earth's life, you're like, oh shit, this this one does kind of make a bit of sense, right? Like Atlantis, because we, they're like, yeah, we've only been here for such a short period of time, like our civilization, like the last six thousand years that we've actually recorded and can remember more or less. And the the planet's been habitable and we've been humans like we are for, for a very long time. Like we could have easily peaked and like been like pyramid building and then lost that. For, and then 50,000 years went by. We went we resorted back to like hunter gathering people who don't even understand agriculture. And then we could have done it three or four times in the amount of time there there is. There's just no evidence for it. Right. And And so that's when you got to look to places like like maybe Antarctica, maybe like, like, wasn't that a tropical place a long, long time ago, probably predating human, um, humans. But I know at some point it was like maybe close yeah, to where all Australia that shit is. is over like enough millions of years. All that shit's cyclical, right? With like, because well, like the, the well, you had Pangea or something, point, right? Where everything was one giant mega continent and then it broke up. But for yeah. a long time, I think Antarctica was more of a tropical <clears throat> thing, like, like in the Australia area ish. If there was something that like changed in elevation, we would have found that under the seas by now. Or no, because I guess that we we really haven't been. I don't think we've we charted the seas everything. very well. Uh, what do you mean by change in elevation? Like if there was, like if it was like, oh, there was this uh, Atlant. I, that's the only one I know. So I keep saying Atlantis. Oh, it used to be here, and then water levels changed a million years ago, and now so it's that, deep under the sea or something. That's actually fairly common. Um, not just in like ancient civilizations, like the Greek city of. Man, I, I know all this stuff until I'm asked about it. There was a Greek <laughs> city near the coast uh, that was like this sprawling um, uh, landscape that was flooded in, I forget when, that's supposedly the inspiration for stories of Atlantis. Uh, there's also one off the coast of, mm. what's the country that gets hit by tsunamis all the time? It's not Japan, Southeast Indonesia. Asia. I think Indonesia. Um, there was a city that was built in like the 12, 1300s that had gone completely underwater. And what was wild is a couple of years ago when they got hit with their last tsunami, this place has been underwater for hundreds of years. When the water drew back before the wave for the first time, the entire city, like this underwater city with these statues and buildings, the footage of it's wild. That's really uh, cool. The people, I'm the people took the that. footage for having a terrible time. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, uh, I really like the idea of ancient forgotten technologies that might differ from cool. ours greatly enough that that they would be cool and interesting and maybe something could be discoverable i think that Baghdad battery shit is bullshit i don't give a goddamn it's just, it, it, it was probably a it was probably a sex toy they were putting that thing on somebody's clit to like i don't, I don't know what that is your bag, uh, they, they, f- they found these like primitive like uh makeshift batteries it's like a clay pot with um i think you got like an ass an acidic solution and maybe a copper tube or something like that. And and maybe there's another metal that's involved, but in any case, it's, it, it could form an ancient battery. You could make an electrical charge and, uh, but, but they're not powering laptops back then with that thing. They're, they're, they're fucking like sticking their dicks in it. Cause it feels yeah, weird. They're, they're shocking each other for fun. Yeah. I, I, I that's probably like an, uh, a, a, I could imagine a, a religious ritual where they use science to like reinforce religion the way that, uh, remember in, um, What's that awesome Mel Gibson movie, um, the, the Apocalypto, when the, yeah. they know the eclipse is coming and the priest kind of looks over at the head honcho like, yeah, it's coming. And, and by priest, he's like an, he's an, he's an astronomer like from a thousand years ago. And he's just like, here it comes. And so the king is like, bah, 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 the sun disappears. And they're like, holy shit, the boss. Made this. <laughs> and then he's like, and come back. Like as soon as the priest gives him the go ahead nod for that. And it's like, you can imagine how you're going to get in line for a man who does something like that. Like, like a guy who can make the sun like, like, like yeah. disappear and come back. Mm-hmm. The, oh yeah. If, like that's magic. Someone knowing that, that, that the sun is going, they wouldn't even think of it that way. They'd never take that extra leap. Like, because how could you know it was coming? Right. Unless you understood astronomy. Yeah. 
No, I like that a lot. So I like the idea of lost civilizations and uh, mm-hmm. and that stuff just being eaten by the the you know the the um, the, the ravages of time. Well, yeah, the um the way the the Earth's crust goes under itself <laughs> and just gets eaten over and over until there's there's no it's just gone. It's just gone. It is wild to think about like uh, buried cities. Like we build civilization on top of civilization and think of like mm-hmm. everything that's uh sunk underneath concepts of sunken cities from like old uh lore not like in the ocean like the land gave way and there's these underground caverns well, there's that thing in go have you seen the thing um the graham hancock stuff about the the Gobleki tepe uh uh place in turkey i've heard of it and it's supposed to be like a super old civilization or some people yeah, theorize he, he, that yeah that, that that graham hancock guy he's been on rogan a bunch of times i i, I read his books they're good but he thinks that uh, a comet came and uh, melted a gigantic, like flash melted a huge ice cap and flooded mm. out this ancient civilization that existed like ten or twenty thousand years ago in Turkey. That because and they found this huge, um, you know, structure that was built there, and people should have been like hunter gatherers with stone tools back then, and instead you you would have had to have like a civilization because somebody's got to be hunting and gathering to get. Ec- extra food so that you can have artisans mm-hmm. who can even make something you mm-hmm. know like that and supposedly yeah, kind, we kind of need that agriculture thing. so that's that's an interesting one um i don't know I, I like that stuff a lot i like i like lost mysteries and uh, oh yeah. the other one i really like is uh the idea of life being on one of the uh the moons of um saturn or jupiter maybe like under yeah the, the uh uh what's the one everyone says is super habitable titan uh, maybe i think titan uh, europa that sounds right you're, uh, there's a movie about Europa. Or, yeah. What, what is it called? Is that is that? Jupiter I think it's Titan. Titan. I think Titan's the one everyone says that like it's almost habitable. I don't um, want to live on any of them. And no, 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 no. And then it's it's a couple kilometers of ice at least. And then and then but then you've got a warm yeah, that's ocean. habitable. But, but yeah. you've got a warm ocean down briefly. There. Yeah. And, and I think that, I think anything's I think habitable for yeah. small amounts very, of time. Very briefly. I, I think that like the most ambitious scientists think that there's probably be like some amoebas or some like bacteria down there that feeds off yeah. of uh, thermal activity. But nah, I really want ocean there to monsters. be no. I don't give I a want shit about that. Like I need mermaids. I need something yeah. with hands for me to really care. Like, like an, something like, that made tools. If I get there and the fish has hands, I'm going back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just, that would just confirm it's like, oh, so somebody had a nuclear apocalypse here a long time ago. <laughs> and now all the fish are peeling their kelp in the bottom of the sea. Or the <laughs> yeah, I, wonder, what their <laughs> what, I, I couldn't think of anything they would do with hands. Seems like a bad idea. But uh, I've been looking at a bunch of like weird sci fi. I wanted a new sci fi book, so I've been watching YouTube videos about various like sci fi authors. And I, it might be an Isaac Asimov. I don't know who, who wrote this one, but the premise is that aliens come to Earth and they just sort of like hover over us. And there are, we do try to attack them, but it like bounces off and they're like, chill. Listen, we're here to help. Um, our bosses sent us here to get you guys up to speed. You're going to join the Galactic Federation. You can't look at us, though. We're rough looking. OK, we're, we, we're going to hang out here for a while. When you get used to us, you know, our ships and then communicating with us, then we'll reveal ourselves. And that goes on for like many years, like 10, 20, I don't know how many, like call it 10, 15 years. And sure enough, they've really enriched humanity lately. Technology's better, culture's better, everything's better. And uh, and they're like, all right, it's, it, it's time. Chill though, right? And they like step out of their craft and they literally look like the devil. <laughs> they literally look like the <laughs> devil, like horns and pointy tails and like, like pointy teeth and claws. But they're, they, there's no twist at the end. They're just nice. They're, they, they really are these like ambivalent, nice people. They're like, don't be scared. We know that a lot of people get scared of us and all. Um, <laughs> I'm Mark. <laughs> <laughs> this is my, my, my husband, Alan. And it's like, oh, they're positive. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I, I, I've been looking for a new one to, to, to read. Uh, it's that or Helldivers. I, I, I kind of want to go back to the Helldivers series. Which and Helldivers? Finish that. Oh, that's, oh, that's the one where that's the yeah the ever the average life is ten jumps and this guy's on jump ninety five and he's hard yeah. ass. I remember yeah, that. the Earth's all poisoned and we live in the sky on a hover ship. Uh, yeah, th- th- those books are fun. I want to read a book about Antarctica. I don't care if it is a hundred percent whole cloth made up. Like I just, I just like it, it it's a fun, fun story. Yeah, just start off with something kind of fun where it's like the Nazis left and then and then just make it up. 
Yep. Just, yep. Who just, cares? Have, just have a good time. That's all that yeah. matters. That's what matters uh, in was, all these theories that you're having a fun time. <laughs> exactly. The, the funnest part about it is uh, there was a second Operation High Jump, if I remember, like in the 60s or the 70s, um, when a group supposedly went to Antarctica. One of the funnest theories is that they took cameras there and had like like this broken footage of like plant life they discovered and like a civilization of people under the ice. Love it. Fantastic. I believe it. <laughs> Don't oh, need yeah. any further information. I want I'm to believe all it. living under the ice. I want to take one of them. Ma- because because our, I, shop. Our, our existence is, is a little boring at times, right? Like, you know, like, like the stuff that happens in movies is so dynamic and big and earth changing. And nothing really big has ever happened in our lifetimes. Not really. Like, like, like even to us, it doesn't feel real, you know, but I want something that's so big that even if you're not touched by it, it feels big. Like, like I want to discover some aliens or, 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 or do a thing, right? It seems because like it'd have to be aliens, right? Like, what else I could want, it be? I do want, or, or one of those lost civilizations. I want to find some mole yeah, cool. people under Antarctica, and they've been under okay. there for like 80,000 years, like, like, and, and their technology is way better than ours. Or way and worse. I can't I'm wait fine to with that. But they're mole people, so <laughs> we just beat the fuck out of them. Like, like, I can't wait to like, kill it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where aliens show up and they're like peddling. And we're like, <laughs> <laughs> but I think instead religious groups who have like taken like large groups of people and then been like, yeah, oh, you like God and Jesus. That's cool. But what if, what if you did it this way? What if you changed a bit? Like, for example, um, I would say Jim Jones, uh, I would definitely consider him adjacent. Uh, I would consider, um, Ervil LeBaron. He was one of the early mem- members of Mormonism who brought a bunch of people to the desert, ended up being a serial killer, like had his cult kill mass numbers of people. Um, wow, I yeah, was I, I was, I'd say when was that? Better. I'm interested in that. Uh, Ervil LeBaron, I want to say, he's the, er- por- he's the popcorn <laughs> guy. I want to <laughs> say it was hold on, let me just type it in. His name's Ervil LeBaron. People joke because if you take out the R, his name is Evil the Baron. Oh, uh, shit. Which, <laughs> it was uh, yeah, like 1950s, 1960s, it happened. Um, so okay, there, there was this more recent than I thought you were gonna say. Yeah, there was this big schism within Mormonism. Uh, I believe the disagreement was over polygamy, if I recall correctly. Not a lot of people know this, but core Mormonism, like the parts of it that exist now, are actually super anti-polygamy. It's that there's a bunch of offshoots who have left the church because they're pro-polygamy. And Herbal LeBaron was one of them. So he brought like him and all his sister wives out to the middle of the desert. I want to say it was Nevada, Nevada, New Mexico, one of those. Um, and there was a bunch of other Mormon leaders who would preach against him, who would say that he's a, you know, he's a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, yeah, well, that too. Uh, but the, whenever someone is trying to divert oh. people away from the church. Um, like a false prophet. kind of. But guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was a false prophet. He was uh, a heretic. That's the word I'm looking for. Heretic. Uh, that he was trying to push everyone away from the truth so he would have his members like roll over to that other church at night and they would like stab preachers to death they were there were there was one point that he was going to go on trial uh the the big event of Herbal LeBaron's life is right before he was finally caught um there was like three people that were going to go on uh, uh, testify against him and within an hour all three of them got executed like around the state at different locations. He had planned it that at the same time there would be men in each town. Like one got ki- shot with a shotgun. Another was stabbed to death. Like it was like a breaking bad level hit, like all at the same time. Like uh, cause, c- cause herbal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Paul, that's accusers. laughs> Because yeah, Herbal LeBaron had such a grip on his followers. That's what happens so. to liars, Taylor. The Lord, <laughs> the, the Lord was, struck them down. They were smited by God Almighty for Smote. their filthy lies about the great Kevin Spacey. I'll tell you what I would sell my soul to a cross were, uh, crossroads demon for. Go back and have make Kevin Spacey fix that last season. I want to see what was going to happen. Uh, for I, one I season what, of a show that was one already one season bad. of a show that was already downhill. I want to know what Doug was going to do. I want to know if he was going to kill that that bitch wife of his. I want to know. I need to see it. Bring Kevin back. Hashtag safe Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all of his accusers are either gone. dead or gone. And I'm not sure that proves his innocence like you're implying. <gasps> It, it does not. Dude, the well list of this guy's act. wives and accomplices on Ervil LeBaron is insane. 
Like, yeah, he had like 60 kids. And they included in that and also raised a couple of stepkids mm-hmm. as as though they're like pumping his tires a little bit here. It's like Thank you. it seems, it. seems like a bad guy killed on behalf of the cult. That's a whole column in this enormous table killed on behalf of the cult. Why, 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 why? Like a lot of yeses that they killed yeah. on behalf of this cult. So how did. So how old was he old enough him? that his here's my question, because this is. I'm imagining. I know y'all haven't seen it, but that that um the 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 the, the TV show about this where the guy had uh, under the banner with, of heaven. Um, and were his children like he had sixty kids or whatever? Does that mean he had like an army of sons? Because yeah, you can imagine when that would that's be very did most formidable. Of the killing. Yeah. <sighs> if yeah. you had twenty grown man sons, that would be difficult to deal with the guy who has twenty sons who are like yeah. eighteen or older. Yeah. That would be a problem. Right? Not as difficult as a guy who has 41 sons. <laughs> I, grew up, I grew up without a big brother, but I hear about this circumstance where like someone would beats up your little brother and then the big brother goes and beats them up. If there's 41 bigger and bigger brothers, like if you start on the totem pole, it's going to be a long fucking day before you get to dad to, yeah. to, to say anything about anything. It's like a video game. He like sends out the C team first. And then, you have to be like a, then you have to be like the boss son who he, had, who he had with like an enormous Mormon bitch. He just sends two mean girls. He sends his two meanest daughters to get you first. Yeah. It's, it's funny too, because this is going back to like medieval times thought. It's like, I have to have so many sons because if not, this castle's getting destroyed. Like we gotta yeah. have more kids. Yeah, yeah. You thought yeah. like, all right, I need like fifteen sons because eight of them are gonna die in the the wars they're conscripted into, or at childbirth, like like a quarter. We don't understand how gone, germs right? work yet, so that's gonna take <laughs> a few. We don't know what they are, but we're really afraid of them. <laughs> like people just die. It's weird. <laughs> they can you imagine no how like, we pray? Like <laughs> back in the day, it was just like the only conception you could have of germs was like. Even them being airborne was just because you would get sick, even though you didn't touch the gross person. Like that's the only way they could know. It's like Bro, okay, it so the something, stink. something's clearly going around here. They and thought I mean, it was they the were... stink of the dead body. Yeah, like, like oh, oh no, like 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 the the vapors of it got mm-hmm. me. That's that that would make you ill. Like they're almost which, close. Which they they, they were, were close. That's like, like they were close yeah. enough. <laughs> just yeah. Put it together. yeah, there was um this thought process this was right before germ theory came around i want to say it was like american civil war i think it lasted like spanish civil war so like 1880s the idea was if you were a doctor operating on living patients right so like someone an amputation gunshot whatever Mm -hmm. the idea was that the blood of the living is good right because they're not dead the dead bad live good so Mm -hmm. if you get a bunch of blood on your hands and you let it cake on and harden, that acts as a protective layer against other things. So the idea was if you were working on people like in a medical tent, never wash your hands because you're supposed to have as much coverage from one person to the I other. And then they tried yeah, washing yeah. their hands during World War One, and they're like, oh, we're having like a 98% survival rate yeah. <laughs> over what last year's demographics. This is incredible. Isn't that like uh, the Florence yeah. Nightingale story? Or like she was a big advocate of, of washing your hands. Yes, and a lot of yeah, people at the time yeah. were like, shut up, you dumb bitch. <laughs> Where's my Meanwhile, blood bucket? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, a bunch of pussies, Muslim. really. They don't understand how inoculation works. <laughs> you need I to bet there was a Muslim dip guy your hands somewhere in before surgery. Like, oh, yes. Really washing up that same year, there was a Muslim in the desert. <laughs> oh, those fools. <laughs> <laughs> like, they knew, didn't they? Like, like, a lot, a lot things. of Middle Eastern countries did. You're right. Yeah. Jesus. A lot of cultures figured it out way before that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, working immune system. Healthcare Thank sucks. You. I mean, the, the Romans great. figured that shit out. They washed their hands. <laughs> I, they, I was they watching did, a thing. They were talking about that device that was invented apparently during World War One. When you break your up, uh, what's the bone from your hip to your knee? Is that a femur? Femur. Mm-hmm. So when you break your femur, that the biggest bone in your leg, the muscles pull the 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 hip to the knee because they're you know they're under pressure normally, oh, yeah. and the bone is now break, broken. So that bone slips past the each shaft mm-hmm. slips past the other, and so. <sighs> the death rate of someone who had broken their femur was massively high. It's like a career wound. This is a career mm. ending. Wound. <laughs> yeah. You're muted, Kyle. Oh, we lost you, Kyle. 
it's a career ending injury. Mm-hmm. If your you know your career is fighting in a trench or Being fighting alive. the unions or the Confederates, <laughs> all those all those guys. Man, he got so mad. He was like, "I'm, I'm done with this." <laughs> he got so pissed that he's that he's being disproven that demons exist. I have a suspicion that it's hard. Where you're still muted. One, two, three, four. Oh, you're, no, you're, hard, not, you're not. There he is. Yeah. So, um, it would be a career-ending wound to say the least. You'd fucking die. And uh, they they created this. Mm device that just stretches the leg back out it looks like it's kind of like a superstructure that goes over your hip all the way to the end of your leg like a bird cage type apparatus is it like a yeah. chinese finger trap no but hmm. more like a, a long i think that's what the leg does you, in that situation leg. But, you know stretches <laughs> the leg back out so they can get those two shafts together so they can mend and then um the the, the death rate just plummet like like that one hmm. thing was that was what they needed to do. Can you when imagine I, growing up like, like getting hurt in a time where the bone saw was the doctor's most common implement? Dude, I would be <laughs> I, I've broken every limb bone at this saw. point. <laughs> do you know what it would look like? I'd be a worm. <laughs> you, you wouldn't be Woody. You'd be Stumpy. Uh, yeah, no, he'd be Woody. Him. <laughs> he'd, be, he'd be the guy with two wooden legs. <laughs> like Let's that say that like that. Oh, Woody, he'll when never I, sink. <laughs> when I broke my left arm, the to set it, they had a thing that was basically, you know, the Chinese finger toys. You put your hands in, yeah. and when you pull them, they get tighter. Uh, it was a device like that. It was for six fingers. I, I'm not sure why, but it had like six little finger traps. They put your hand in it, and then they put weights on your bicep, and it just pulls your form apart. Hmm. That's Very how they. Interesting. That's how they set bones. Yeah, because oh, I'm under you. I've had it. it there also a, doesn't sound like you're describing jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> there is a super lovely husband and wife couple <laughs> where I trained, and uh, they were Mormon. They were really like sweet and nice. <laughs> Mormon jujitsu. Yeah. yeah, it's true. <laughs> and, and I really liked them both. Um, and she was pretty good, but. I don't know if she had more skill than me, but it wasn't close because I was so much bigger and stronger. Yeah. And uh, um, but yeah, you just like she'd lay there on her back, knees spread and you get in her guard. And if you don't know, that just means missionary position. It's exactly the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just like this doesn't seem right. But here we are. Yeah. A Mormon yeah, who can do that. Good. That's good tactics. It's like I it's demand good. a moment of your time to talk about your Lord and Savior. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know, federal you government agencies, a, full Nelson. At federal government agencies recruit um, extensively from from Mormon, uh, like Mormon groups. It's not a joke. Like like they, Wait, they exhibit. Why? When you say government agencies, it. you talk about like the it. three letters: yeah, FBI, FBI, CIA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they um, they they find that Mormons are the perfect agents they 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 have oh, they have this good. stable background they have this this established history they're they're often from the correct like uh socioeconomic groups like they tons they of family right into that agency in case they get out of line the cia can be like hey ezekiel and isaiah and jeremiah and jedediah and Susie and alan and you know the the other half of your siblings are in trouble you if you don't do here? this yeah. Hey, if, if you if that. you mess with us, we'll destroy your house. That'll be at least sixty-seven people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're they're people with roots. Um, as another yeah. way of thinking of it. Uh, mm-hmm. Whereas Enrique, who just like, hey, I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. Like, <laughs> we don't give him top secret clearance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> he I'm seems happy card. about it. <laughs> I, I mean, like none of us know shit about the CIA compared to to Wendigoon. Is that true? Are the Mormons filling up our intelligence apparatus? Do we need to be worried? It it makes a lot of sense because like the CIA, they've been reined back in in recent years, but primarily like Cold War times and stuff. They were their own like dragon, like the, the FBI didn't like them. Other agencies didn't like them. Even at this day, I know people in the FBI who are like, oh, those spooks. I don't want to work with them. Like it's an entirely That's super different racist. machine. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, buddy. We're all <laughs> and, and then they're like, and don't get me started on the CIA. Like, <laughs> <laughs> 
It's like, damn, these guys are straight from the 50s. <laughs> just, just wrap the show 17 minutes long. I'm loving it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, good. good game, boys. <laughs> I think you are liking it now. It's not going to make you love it. <laughs> want to keep doing the Italian hairdresser all the time. <laughs> the new character. He's don't know how to do the voice. So good. The, the closeted Italian hairdresser. Yes. <laughs> You're a hairdresser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've been watching videos. <laughs>